everyone, and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Rigging in Unity. My name is Kasanis. Guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the walk and the run. We're going to continue on with animation and take a look at the walk and the run for your characters. Now, I'm just going to say this right away. It's 4 o'clock in the morning here where I'm at. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. We're not getting out of it anytime soon. I'm actually at my parents' house. My parents are older. I brought my, my entire family down here. My wife and my kids are down here as well. We're all kind of jammed into one little house. And, and I'm not complaining about this at all. You know, I'm, I'm happy to help my parents. I, I want to make sure they stay inside. They're older. I want to make sure they stay inside. They don't go out shopping and, you know, they don't spread the virus or get the virus themselves. So there's a lot of compromises we're all making right now. And, and I hope you guys understand. I am on a, a smaller computer. I am not in my regular recording location. Maybe my voice sounds different. It's, it's like I said, 4 a.m. And this is the only time that I could actually get up and do any kind of recording. Because otherwise, everyone's going to be up. My kids will be running around. My parents will be running around. Everyone's going to be running around <laughs> and making noise. So it's 4 a.m. here. If my voice is a little scratchy, I'm sorry. If I sound a little quiet, I'm sorry. Anyway, guys, let's get started here. We're going to take a look at animation of a character. Okay, guys, fantastic. Let's take a look at this walk cycle. Now, there's a couple things that we need to talk about before we actually get into the animation. First of all, my project might look a little bit different than what you remember. I've actually got this, this game screen now, and I can actually see a bunch of different buttons in here. You don't need any of that stuff to be able to do your animation. Don't worry about it if all you've got is your character. We're working on the character. The only thing I did is I put this stuff in here to make sure that we were able to, I was able to show you right away what the different cycles that we're going to take a look at looks like. Okay, awesome. Now, unlike in the last episode when we talked about the idle and I told you there's no such thing as a generic idle cycle, well, that's not true for the walk and the run. In fact, there is a very generic walk and a very generic run. Now, generic, as the name implies, means it's something that can represent every kind of basic walk. It's just a very basic walk, and a very basic walk, or a very basic run for that matter, are made up of very particular poses, and we're going to get to all of those in just a minute. Okay? Now, when I talk about this generic walk, again, you have to start to consider the fact that you don't, are not, you don't have a generic character here. You've got a particular character. I've got a zombie in this particular case. And a zombie does not walk the same as a ballet dancer, who does not walk the same as an ogre, who doesn't walk the same as an astronaut. All of these characters are going to walk different. So you're going to have to understand how your character walks, and you're going to have to change your basic generic walk cycle to match your character. Okay, so make sure you're, you're keeping this in mind. To start off with, start off with the basic walk, get that working, the generic walk, get that working, and then adjust it. Okay, I did the same thing, and I'll show you how that worked in just a minute. Now, when we talk about, when we talk about animation that has movement in it, like a walk or a run where you're going from place to place, we can look at the idea of either root motion or treadmill motion. And root motion means that the, the character physically moves from location to location. Their entire weight physically moves. In treadmill motion, the character walks in place. Okay, so it kind of looks like they're walking on a treadmill. Each of them serve a very different purpose. Uh, with treadmill motion, it's very easy to adjust to how, how far a character is moving at any given time. Uh, it's, it's up to the programmer to kind of decide how fast or how quickly the character is moving around the screen. Where with root motion, it is the animator's decision on how fast this character is going to be moving around the screen. I still, I, I do both. I animate and I code, and I still really like treadmill motion. So today, we're going to be using treadmill motion. You can apply root motion to this if you want to. It doesn't really matter. The principles are exactly the same. And in fact, with root motion, it's much easier to have the weight be in the proper location at any given time. But I really like treadmill motion, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay? So that's a couple of things that you have to consider before we even begin. Now, when we talk about the idea of a generic walk cycle... The normal walking pace, the natural walking place, is about one second to complete both strides. One second, maybe a second and a quarter uh, to complete both strides. So the left and the right leg moving forward and going back to the left leg again. Uh, that is a normal, regular, natural walk. Obviously, your character might be going faster if they're rushing somewhere, or they might be walking slower if they're kind of like a sloth-like character. Who knows, right? But a normal, natural walk cycle is about one second in, in length uh, to complete both steps. Okay, 
The normal walk cycle is made up of very particular poses. The contact pose, the down pose, the passing pose, the up pose, back to the contact pose. And you have to do this for each leg. So let's take a look at my character right now. I've got myself the zombie. Here he is right here. And the zombie is, uh, I've already done this animation for you. So I'm gonna go to my animation tab. I'm gonna select my zombie and I'm going to go to my walk. I've already done all these animations for us. Here's my zombie generic walk. And let me just scrub a little bit here so we can see it. Um, I have not done any kind of additional animation. When we talk about animation, uh, we might go through and build ourselves our key poses and then our, our extremes and then our breakdowns. And we, we, we're gonna build all of these different poses. I didn't really do that. I have made just the key poses so you can see that just doing the key poses is going to give you what looks like a generic walk. All right, I didn't add in any overlapping action really. They're built into these keyframes. So none of this animation is the strongest. In fact, I've gone through and I'm trying to do this animation and this, this work as fast as I can. Everyone's stuck at home and something really struck me. One of, one of the comments that was made on, on one of my videos really struck me about how people are at home and they've got nothing else to do. And in some locations, people are in, in a military lockdown and other locations are just, they're just at home and they're, they're sticking around home because they, they're, they're being conscious of the nature of this pandemic. So I'm trying to make these videos as fast as I can to make sure that you guys have videos as well. Uh, something to do at home. And, and I'm not thinking that the entire world is watching my videos. In fact, I am making these videos for my students uh, and for you out there as well. And I don't think that you out there as well is the entire world. Uh, but I just want to make sure that those are who are loyally watching these videos have something to watch while they're at home. Anyway, it's, it's early and I'm babbling, aren't I? Anyway, so we've got ourselves the breakdown poses, or, or sorry, the, the key the key frames, and that's all I've used here. If we take a look, if I scrub across this animation, right here at about a half a second is the end of my first step. And then across to one second is the end of my second step. All right, so I have both steps in here and I've done it in the one second time frame that I've suggested you should do. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at these individual poses. This first pose is called the contact pose. And it's called the contact pose because our feet have made contact with the ground still. It's just as this front leg has struck the ground and the back leg is rolled up. The foot is rolled up and rotated about the ball of the foot. So the toes are kind of squashed. With the contact pose, there's a couple things that are important. First of all, it's really important if you are building a generic walk, not if you're building a character walk, but if you're building a generic generic walk, that your arms and your legs are moving opposite. So if your left leg is forward, that means your right arm is forward. And if your right arm is forward, that means your left leg is, uh, is forward. All right? So... <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous that I have to say this, but in all honesty, uh, I find that I often do. A lot of my students will uh, will get this wrong. In fact, I was in the military, and I have I have memories of people marching next to me with the wrong arms and legs moving forward at the same time, and it was always ridiculous to see. We called that bear walking, bear walking. Anyway, guys, so make sure that your arms and legs are moving opposite of each other. All right. If the front leg, if the front leg is the left leg, that means the right arm is forward. And if the front leg is the right leg, that means the left arm is forward. Okay, perfect. There is no weight being really borne on any of these. It's rolling off this foot. There's no weight being borne on the front leg at this time. All right, so it's just struck the ground. The next pose that we're gonna see here is the down pose. So let me scroll forward. This is the down pose. So the down pose itself is the lowest point in the walk. You can see if I scrub back and forth that my character has moved downwards, all right? This is the lowest point in the walk. The, after we're all done, the characters kind of make this, make this like sine wave like this as they move up and down. This is the lowest point in the walk, all right? At this time, the front leg has is now bearing the weight, so all the weight's kind of shifted onto this front leg. The foot has gone flat. The back foot has snapped up and off the ground. And at this point in time, our arms are at their widest point. All right, so the arms are swinging at their widest point in the down pose. A lot of people think it's in the contact pose, it's not. So right here in the down pose for generic walk, this is where the arms are farther apart or the farthest apart, I should say. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the next pose. The next pose is called the passing pose. The passing pose itself is slightly higher than the down pose. It is probably about as high as the contact pose. Uh, and that's because right now our front leg is moved into the center of the body and the arms and legs are passing by the body itself and, and everything's kind of coming together in the middle of our character. Uh, and with this leg completely straight, obviously they're gonna be higher than they were in the previous pose because they're taller at this point in time. They're, they're completely upright. Uh, you're gonna need to lift. The only thing you have to understand here is the arms are now swinging either forward or backwards. The legs are now swinging forward or backwards. Uh, the leg that is coming from the back to the front is going to be lifted off the ground. It's gonna need to swing as much as it needs to to make sure it passes the ground itself. This character, the way I built it, has large feet. Uh, I could rotate this to make sure that, it, that it's swinging by and, and passing by the ground. I didn't really take uh, that much consideration in this, to be honest. But I made sure that the, the foot itself was passing, passing above the ground. I don't want to make contact with the ground. I don't want to drag those toes. All right, so there's nothing really about this one. It's slightly higher than the last pose, and the arms and the legs are now moving into their new positions. This next pose is called the up pose, and it's called the up pose because it's the highest point in the animation. This is the highest point in the walk cycle, so the head is at its highest. Now, if we take a look, everything is swinging forward in the direction it's supposed to go. Our character's kind of leaning forward a little bit. Our front leg, or what's now going to be our front leg, has moved forward past the body, and it is swinging into position so it can make contact in the next pose. Our back leg is relatively straight. It should be as straight as you can get it. So it's a straight leg here, and the foot is rolled up on the ball of the toe. So that's why our character's getting that additional height. They've pushed themselves forward, and they've rolled up on the ball on their toe. Okay, awesome. One last pose. That low, last pose is our contact pose. There we go. It is with the opposite leg now, so we've hit the ground on the opposite side. This contact pose is identical in nature to the other one. Okay, everybody, that's it. That's all the poses you need. You're going to repeat the exact same thing on the other side. So our down pose, our passing pose, our up pose, and our contact pose. And that entire thing gives you a walk. That's it. We've got two legs moving forward, and we've got ourselves a walk cycle. Awesome. Let's take a look at it. So if I hit play right now, boom, there we go. We can see this playing at its normal, natural speed. All right, and there's my walk. I haven't added any kind of overlapping action other than what I've built into the keyframes themselves. I haven't offset any of these keys. I have everything broken up into just the absolute keyframes that are required to make this walk. And you can see I've got myself a very generic walk. All right, this is probably not how a zombie is going to walk unless he's going to work or something like that, uh, but that's exactly what we've got here. Let's talk really quickly about how I did the animation. So let me just stop this from playing for a second and talk about things that you're going to have to consider in order to be able to do this animation properly. So I've broken it up into even spacing. That's given me a very even paced walk. Uh, when I actually went through and I built each of these poses, all I really did is I went into my curves afterwards and I made sure that my curves were all nice and smooth. That's all I did. I smoothed them out. There's no sudden jarring changes here in the animation. Everything is kind of flowing from one to the other. I also made sure that my endpoints, this is where you're going to have a problem. Let's just uh, grab one of these here. If I just take my, let's see my knee rotation. This is where you're going to have a problem here. Let me just take a look. I'm going to open this up, my knee rotation. Let's take a look at the Z right here. If we take a look at the end positions, that's what we're going to have to really be concerned about. Uh, this is where things go weird. If I zoom in really close here, if I grab this and we take a look at the splines, these will come in flat and they might not match. What you're going to want to make sure is that the first frame and the last frame of your animation flow into each other. All right, so that means that the curve should be continuous across this entire thing. The problem that you're going to have is, in some cases, these might flatten out. In this particular case, it's not so bad. But in some cases, these will flatten out, and it'll kind of go through a spot where the animation slows in and then slows out of it. And you might not want that. You might want a continuous flow through this particular location. That's it. That's all you're really going to have to consider as you are doing your animation. Okay, now, what I want to do is take a look at the generic walk in the play form over here, and I've got it set up so we can kind of scrub back and forth between a generic walk and a character walk. Okay, I'm just gonna hit play here. I've already got it on maximize on play, so I'll hit play, 
and we will take a look at, well, this is my idol. First of all, we saw this the last time. Here's the idol. The character's gonna switch back and forth with the idol. Uh, we'll just let him swap back again here. Just so you guys can see how it swapped back and forth and how everything's kind of blending together nice. Switch for me, character, switch. Switch, please. All right, he's not gonna switch right now. So right over here, I've got a bunch of different buttons. There he goes. We've got a bunch of different buttons set up and I've got it set up so we can take a look at the walk. If I hit the walk right now, the character will start into the normal generic walk cycle. And this is what it looks like playing. And like I said, there's no offset of keys or anything here. It's just literally playing through those keyframes that I showed you before. I've got a little scrub bar down here as well so that we can kind of see what I could do as far as a, gen as far as a character walk is concerned. Because this is not how a zombie's gonna walk, right? This guy is just going someplace. Maybe he's getting up to go to the bathroom or something. He's got somewhere to go and he's determined, all right? That's not how a zombie's gonna work. So instead what I've done is I've created this character walk. You can see that it's very similar in nature. I still have the same similar type poses. There's a little bit of pop in this little foot down here. That's how it goes, I guess. I did this quick. Uh, but this is a character walk. Now, this thing here, I've still got the same poses. I still have my, my uh, down pose, my up pose, my passing pose. It's all still here. All my poses are still here. But I've adjusted it to match how I think this character would work. All right. I've got the one arm forward, so it's not swinging back really. I've got the character leaning backwards, so he's not really looking where he's going. You know, brains. He's one of those kind of zombies. Uh, and I'm actually really happy that I did both walks, the generic and this character walk, because it allows me to utilize the animator to create a blend between these two different walks. So I can either set it up for the walk itself, the standard generic walk, if I really wanted it to, or I could put it halfway, and because I'm using a joint system, I've got myself the ability to blend these two animations together. So here is a blend of the two, all right? So I can, I can scrub it all the way forward, or I can blend the two, and it gives me some variety as far as these characters are concerned inside of a game. Having two walks like this is going to give me some variety. And maybe I'd want to make them a little bit more extreme. I don't know. Uh, but I've got two different walks. And by blending them together, I can get several different types of characters so the characters aren't all working exactly the same. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you are staying safe during this pandemic. Right now, we're all stuck at home, and I hope you guys are having a good time watching some videos. And you know what? If you are, if you're at home and you're watching videos, you, you got to realize how privileged we really are, how privileged we are. There's lots of people who don't have an opportunity to access the internet if they're not at school. There's a lot of people who don't have internet at home. They don't have television at home, and they're just kind of stuck in a house. All right, guys? So be thankful for how privileged we are in this particular circumstance. I know it feels crappy. I know a lot of us feel crappy being at home and stuck at home the entire time. But really, those of us who are making videos and watching videos are really the privileged people. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. I love to hear from you. Add something in the comments. Show me what you're working on. Take this opportunity that you are stuck at home to make something of your own. All right, guys. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.